Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends and fellow travelers. Please give a very warm welcome to John Armleder. Yeah. I'd like to thank, of course, Sam Keller and the wonderful uh, team of the Bayer Foundation for this invitation. Also, I'd like to thank Rolls-Royce for making this talk possible and foremost and above all, of course, John for agreeing to do once more uh, an interview, a conversation as part of our ongoing uh, infinite conversation. Um, and I thought it would be nice that we tonight uh, begin with the beginning and then maybe talk a little bit about the different catalog uh, raisonné because uh, as you know, uh, and we discussed that a lot um, in May when the Gerhard Richter show opened, uh, the catalog resonate as a kind of a device plays a very important role in, in his work. He started it very early and, uh, uh, in, the, um, in the 1960s and numbered the work through you know, ever since. It's a kind of an editing device. Now, we had a, a formidable uh, lunch with John uh, last year in Geneva, where I finally understood that actually with John, it's a superstring catalog resonate. It's like in you know, physics in superstring theory where you have 11 dimensions, so we couldn't have a catalog raisonné of John, but there are these many, many catalog raisonné. I thought it could be a nice topic for today's conversation, you know, and for an insight into the way John works to kind of talk about all these catalog raisonné. But before we do that, John, I wanted to ask you to begin with the very beginning uh, and to tell us how it all started, because uh, you once told me when we met for the first time that you decided to become painter when you were eight years old and that there was an epiphany at MoMA in 1956. Yes. What happened there? <laughs> uh, I wonder. Uh, happily, I've forgotten. The, the first, it was second epiphany. Uh, the first one probably, which makes all things uh, closer to Gerhardt in a way, was when I was probably four years old, when things start in general, in fact, uh, I, I was in, in uh, Florence, and in front of uh, in, in the Angelico Museum, there is one painting uh, of an angel with a polychrome uh, wing, and I remember very well the feeling of the uh, vision I had of that uh, of that wing uh, blurring, which has to do again with uh, Gerhardt in a way, because it was a very crisp image of a wing and suddenly it became uh, like a blotted one. It's a very polychrome wing, and I know I looked at it and I wondered why it was suddenly blurred. And basically, because I had tears in my eyes, which is a song, but I didn't know that then. And uh, I, I think that's the very first moment really where I had this relationship clearly having to do with maybe art and being involved in art. And it's true that the second one you know, also, all these, don't believe all those stories because we tell stories of our life, which are the stories that people reported uh, that we had said one a time or another, and we repeated, and they, they, they become a, our a memory as a legend, but probably it's all fake. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, one of those fake moments, which I sort of remember very well, uh, was when I went the first time to the States. My mother was American never lived in America, but she would go there from time to time. And there's a lot of Americans uh, who don't live in America. They picture America, the United States, I mean, as uh, some kind of a paradise where everything is correct. Uh, so we went there in 56, meaning I was eight years old. That's what you mentioned. Uh, and we arrived in a country which was quite different than what was described. And to make the story short, we went all our way to, at one point, go at the Modern in New York. And my mother was a very nice person because she wanted us to be exposed to art. She was close to many people in the art world anyway, as a kid already. So she never sort of you know, took our hand to say, look at this painting, and then after that, look at that one. And There was no structure to it. It was like a, a free way to uh, run around the museums or churches or whatever we were visiting. But that meant also that I was always being lost because I would suddenly disappear and